Hello all, this is Shatabdi Acharya from Vedang Institute of Technology. In this video, we will be starting a new module that is of metallurgy and in that module, we will be taking up the first part that is bonding in solids. This will be the first module of metallurgy, bonding in solids. Now let us see under bonding in solids, what are the subtopics you have? So first of all, ionic bonds, covalent bond, Metallic bonds, bond energies and lastly secondary bonding. So these are the basic subtopics, ionic bond, covalent bond, metallic bond, bond energies or we can say bond enthalpy. Okay, in some books you might find the word enthalpy. So, enthalpy is nothing but similar to energy. And lastly, secondary bonding. So, these are the major five subtopics you are having under bonding in solids. Okay, so first let us take up ionic bond. Before moving to ionic bond, let us understand our topic a bit better. Okay, so bonding in solids. So, first of all, why solids? What are solids? So, in states of matter, you might have read that there are three major states of matter that is solid, liquid and gas, right? So, matter can be classified into three different types. One is solid, liquid and gas. Now, on what basis are we classifying matter into these three categories? Okay, so whenever I am saying solid, the first thing that comes to your mind is something that is very hard, which is incompressible or which cannot be broken down, right? So, what makes that solid so hard and incompressible? To know that, let us see what, like exactly what matter is made up of. So, matter, if we further break matter into smaller particles, we will reach to the origin of it and that is atom. Got it? So, all matters are made up of atoms. Now, or I can say atoms are the building blocks of matter. They are the building blocks of matter. That means, I can say, if uh, like uh, take the example of a building, right? So, a building is made when bricks are kept one upon the other, like bricks are arranged in a particular pattern, then we get a building, right? So, for example, uh, like similarly, for making up matter, atoms have to be arranged in a particular fashion, right? Now, matter is classified as solid, liquid and gas and from solids, what you know is it is very hard. That means, the building blocks of that matter might be arranged in a definite pattern which gives rise to a solid. So, we can say if I am representing this as a matter, then in case of solids, the building blocks are very tightly packed with each other or they are arranged very closely. Okay. And they are made up of atoms. Right. Matter is made up of atoms. So, I can say in case of solids, the atoms are arranged very tightly with each other or they are arranged in a very compact fashion. Got it? Okay. So, if the atoms are arranged very tightly, there are two other key terms you need to understand. One is interatomic. <laughs> interatomic force of attraction. Secondly, interatomic atomic 
space. Okay, interatomic force of attraction and interatomic uh, space. Now, what does the word interatomic means? Interatomic simply means in between the atoms. Okay, so as the solid is or every matter for that uh, matter, so everything is made up of atoms only, right? So the uh, interatomic force of attraction and the interatomic space determine what that matter exactly is. Suppose if I'm taking solid here, what I have seen. The atoms are arranged in a very compact fashion. So, if the atoms are arranged in a compact fashion, then definitely the interatomic force of attraction will be very high. Or interatomic force of attraction is that force of attraction which holds the atoms together or which binds the atom together. If that force of attraction is high, then the atoms will definitely be closely packed. Secondly, interatomic space. Obviously, it is inversely related to this. If the force of attraction is high, then the atoms will be very closely packed and the space will be minimum. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, in case of solids, I can say the atoms are uh, like very closely packed or packed in a very compact fashion, having very high interatomic force of attraction and very less interatomic space. Okay. <coughs> Similarly, moving on to liquid, what I can say, the atoms are packed tightly, like they are close, but a bit farther as compared to solids. See, if you are seeing this pen and a glass of water or simply water, what happens? Water, like wherever you keep that water, it will take the shape of that particular container. If I am keeping water in a glass, it will take the shape of that particular glass. If I am keeping it in a bottle, then it will take the shape of the bottle itself. But this pen, whether I put it in a glass or in a bottle, it will retain its own shape. That means as compared to liquids, solids are bit compact, the atoms are bit compactly packed. So I can say in case of solid, the interatomic force of attraction is lesser than that of solid. Definitely, if the interatomic force of attraction is lesser, then the intermolecular space or the interatomic space is a bit farther or a bit more. So, I can represent liquid like this. Okay. Now, talk, coming to gas, what happens? Here, the gas, if I compare gas with liquid, then gas is highly, highly flexible. That means, if I open a bottle of perfume for, let's say, the perfume bottle contains gas. So, whenever I open a bottle of perfume, what happens? The smell diffuses into the entire room or when I am lighting the agarbatis, okay, the incense sticks. What happens? Whenever I am lighting the stick, the smell uh, spreads out in the entire room. That means the gas molecules, they have very, very, very less interatomic force of attraction. The molecules are highly free, okay. They, the interatomic force of attraction is very, very less is in compared to gas, like well, in case of gases. Now, interatomic space will be maximum, right? So, I can represent gas like this. <coughs> okay. So, this is the case of solid, liquid and gas. Now, when you know the structure of solid, we will be focusing majorly on solids because in metallurgy, we will be dealing with metals. And metals mostly exist in solid state. That's why we are majorly concerned about what like the structure of solids or what chemistry is going on inside the solid substances. Okay, at the molecular or atomic level. Okay, so if I'm saying solid, then this should come to your mind every time will be like throughout this module. Okay, so here see, in case of if I'm comparing solid, liquid, and gas, what happens? The interatomic force of attraction is very very high in case of solids. Then gradually it goes on decreasing as we move down to liquid and to gases. So, <coughs> okay. If I come to bonding now, what do you mean by bonding? Bond means force of attraction. Okay. Bonding simply means force of attraction and force of attraction between whom? Any two entities which are closer together. Now, the closer proximity is the major factor or the most important factor for bonding. Now, talking of closer proximity, if I look at these three structures, 
then what i see is in case of solid the inter atomic force of attraction being very high the atoms are very close to each other the proximity between the atom is very high in case of solid and therefore bonding in solid can be very significant <coughs> excuse me okay because of the closer packing of the atoms what i can say is the bonding in case of solid is very significant as compared to liquids and gases got it okay now you understood why the chapter is named bonding in solids now one what conclusion we can come to now is as in case of solid you can say as in case of solids the atoms are very closely packed the intermolecular or the interatomic space in between them is very less so the chances of bonding in between the atom is very high or the bonding is significantly prevalent right now the question comes okay you said atoms in case of solid they can form bonds now what kind of bonds so to answer that we have three bonds in your syllabus one is ionic bond covalent bond and metallic bond and these are the bond bonds you have been studying since your childhood they are the same okay that's nothing different so if i'm talking of ionic bond <coughs> Okay. Now here, if I speak of ionic bonds, from the name itself, what comes to your mind is from the name itself, ionic bond. What comes to your mind is ions, right? So ionic bond is closely related to the formation of ions. Now, what do you mean by ions? Okay. We know. Yeah, ma'am, you said about atoms. We understood. Atoms are the building blocks of matter. now what do you mean by ions see you know there is a rule called octet rule okay octet rule is the major driving idea about bonds like this made or this led to the formation of bonds <coughs> what octet rule states is any atom whichever like whichever atom it may be maybe a metal or non metal or anything but that atom tends to have maximum of 8 electrons in order in its outermost shell okay in order to attain an atom can be considered as a as a stable atom if it has <coughs> <coughs> it can be considered as a stable atom if it has 8 electrons in its outermost shell that's the octet rule now in order to attain eight electrons the atom can go to any extent the atom can do by any hook or crook method the atom will attain eight electrons in its outermost shell got it okay so what are the chances that the atom has like can undergo to attain eight electrons see first of all if the atom is having one two or three electrons in its outermost shell okay it has to make eight suppose let's say i'm taking the example of sodium the atomic number is 11 and the electronic configuration turns out to be 281 right so if i'm saying sodium has to attain stability that means the one electron which is present in its outermost shell or the valence shell it has to be like converted to eight electrons so what it can do is it can either gain seven electrons from its surrounding anywhere by any means it has to gain seven electrons to make its outermost shell configuration eight or else what it can do is it can simply lose that one electron to become or to attain the uh, like what it will do is basically lose this electron and make this two and this one as its outermost shell <coughs> so by that also it can attain the stable octet configuration now what will be easier for sodium obviously it cannot go on hunting for seven electrons it cannot go on begging for seven electrons like who will give seven electrons that's a lot okay and that too 
taking up seven electrons is very highly energy not so energy efficient okay that will be very difficult for sodium to take up seven electrons from surrounding the easier solution to that is to lose one electron so what sodium will do is it will lose this outermost electron it will prefer losing outermost electron and if electrons are lost see the atom was neutral because it had similar or same number of electrons and uh, like protons okay positives and negatives were equal they cancel out each other and i considered the atom as neutral but now what happens here sodium has lost one electron that is it has lost a negative charge so what will overpower now positives and negatives are equal now negative just lowered a bit and positive will obviously overpower that so sodium will attain <coughs> a plus one configuration <coughs> now talking of elements which have five six or seven electrons in their outermost shell i am taking the standard example of chlorine which has electronic configuration 2 8 7 now in order like to cons to make chlorine stable again it has to follow the octet rule and for attaining like uh, it has to either take up one electron from its surrounding or what it can do lose seven electrons now if the chlorine atom is losing something then there must be some other atom to take up those seven electrons again taking up seven electrons as i said is very like it's an energy expenditure process nobody will do that and chlorine will obviously not um, like uh, be willing to lo lose its seven electrons right what it can do it simply is in need of a single electron so it can take up from any atom by that matter right so it will take up one electron to attend 288 configuration okay <coughs> Now, what changes are happening in case of chlorine? It was having same number of electrons and protons now. Now, it gained electron, right? The number of negatives overpowered. The positives remained the same. So, now chlorine will atom at attain what charge? Obviously, minus and that to how much? How much unit charge? It has taken up one electron, right? So, it will attain a minus one charge. So, when this neutral atom is either losing or gaining electrons it is getting converted to charge species and these charge species are nothing but ion okay the charge species formed when a neutral atom loses or gains electrons is called ions. Now, ions can be positive or negative as you have seen here. It can be Na plus or Cl minus. Now, if positive ion, we call them cation and negative ions are called as anions. Positive ions are called as cations. Negative ions are called as anions. Now see, suppose I am saying the formation of sodium chloride. What happens is, after Na gains one electron, sorry, loses one electron, it forms Na plus. Chlorine on gaining electron forms Cl minus. When this Na plus and Cl minus, they are present close together, we know opposites attract. Or positive, negative, there is attraction in between them. So, when Na plus and Cl minus are present close together, there will be a force of attraction holding this Na plus and Cl minus, and that force of attraction is called as an ionic bond. Okay. I knew any bond. Bond by that matter is a simply a force of attraction. Now, this force of attraction is arising out of or arising when a positive or a negative and a negative charge, they are present closer to each other. So, I can say ionic bond is that force of attraction which arises when the positive or the cations 
and anions are close together. Got it? This was ionic bond. Now we will see why are we even studying ionic bond in case of bonding in solids. So, okay. See, whenever I am saying solid, that means structure like this. Where the atoms are very close together or closely packed. Now, what happens when this closely packed arrangement of atom is called as crystal lattice? Remember this. This closely packed arrangement of atom is called as crystal lattice. Now, what happens in case of solids? As the atoms are closely packed, they will form a definite crystal lattice. So, in case of sodium chloride, for example, I have shown you only 1 Na and 1 Cl. Okay. They led to the formation of NaCl. But exactly what happens is, in center, we have 1 Na plus ions and 8 Cl minus ions are surrounding itself or surrounding the Na plus in the form of a cube. All corners of a cube are Cl minus ion. Okay, there is a force of attraction between Na plus and Cl minus. Here Cl minus ions are present. Similarly, 1 Cl minus is again bonded to 8 Na plus in its surrounding. Many cubes are attached like this. And this structure of cubes goes on elongating like this and we get the crystal lattice. It, it goes on elongating. Okay, we get the whole crystal lattice. <coughs> and why this crystal lattice is arising? It is arising because there is a force of attraction between Na plus and Cl minus. Okay. So, that is where ionic bonding in solid, the concept of ionic bonding in solid comes to our rescue. So, here what we understood in this video, what we understood is in case of solids, that one possible type of bonding is ionic bonding, which arises when positives and negative ions are present in closer proximity. Right. So, this was it about this video. In the next video, we will be taking up about covalent bonding and other kind of bonding. Okay. That is all. Thank you for this one.